the development of an entertainment centre in Auckland seems to have caused all sorts of controversy in the last week or two, whether deals were done beforehand and whether we need greater transparency and so on. One of the key parameters, I suppose, in that discussion is nobody other than one party seemed to have the financial resources without the state chipping in volumes of money. Now this uh, lack of financial resources is something that uh, is going to become an increasing problem in New Zealand. Another example of the lack of financial resources is the issues concerning Fonterra and the tradable shares. I think there were some interesting votes a couple of years ago. It's going to come out for another vote. But at the core of this is the need for that co-op, a very large company, to be able to generate a stronger balance sheet so that it can participate as a major world player. And that's talking about investments of not tens of million dollars and probably not even hundreds of millions of dollars, but probably into the billions. And if you're going to invest billions of dollars in offshore plant and machinery, then you re need a much stronger balance sheet than what a co-op is likely to be able to provide, unless, of course, the 10,500 shareholder member owners can all throw in five or six million dollars a piece. That would certainly strengthen the balance sheet. So New Zealand is trying to confront that issue of how do we increase savings, KiwiSaver, uh, incentives for superannuation, and other things have been talked about and some changes are occurring which will try and enhance the savings capacity of the country. I think it is important that we get clearer information about how strong our savings are, how much indebtedness we have, we talk about the government debt, the need for the government debt to come down, but then it's the private companies which have massive borrowings offshore or are owned or part owned offshore, so there is the repatriation of dividends to offshore and so on, which increases our indebtedness problems. These issues are complicated but need to be more clearly understood, not just by specialists in the finance and business community, but again by people in general. And so we've had programs pushing the idea of financial literacy in schools, encouraging students to understand banking and the need for saving. But it seems to me inherent that overall the population just does not understand the basic economic drivers and the basic economic challenges that we face. If we're happy to continue to be a farm for the world, then fine. But given the reaction to the Mex Australian-Mexico issue that arose this week, we need to face up to the challenge that we will become a lower and lower wage sector economy unless we can get the capital accumulation in New Zealand to raise productivity. And that means that people really need to understand the 5, 10, 20 year plan ahead for the New Zealand economy.